Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest. But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. Yeah, see, we even got like a, like a training <laughs> session. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you ready to get uh, some hipster uh, real estate advice? I'm ready. Let's go. He seems hesitant. Right. Uh-oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna of, course I'm, of course I'm hesitant. <laughs> As you should be. Why wouldn't I As be? As you should be. <laughs> As you should be. The name All is right. Our, for God's sake. Our guest is Allie Boone. And if you've ever been on Bigger Pockets, she's everywhere. They might yeah. as well be big, Bigger Boone. <laughs> I'll, I'll put that in. I'll pitch that to them and see what they say. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the, the Joshes wouldn't mind that at all. Josh oh, yeah. and Brandon. Definitely so, but she owns hipsterinvestments.com. And what is Hipster Investments? They are a matchmaker. They connect you, the investor, to companies who work with some of the coolest hands-off investing opportunities they know about. Currently, they're working with turnkey rental properties. All the work, rehab, tenants and management are all done for you. All you have to do is buy the property. Don't worry. We help you through the due diligence. Ali Boone, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thanks for having me. Can you be my new hipster salesperson? That was a great uh, entry. Yeah, I'll submit my resume after okay, the I'll, podcast. I'll have so. the crews look it over. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I'm good that way. So, Ali, let's just skip the pleasantries, okay? Yeah. Let's rewind the tape. And how did you start dominating bigger pockets and become the hipster investor that you are today? Um, that's a loaded question. Um, you know, honestly, the short version, it was completely by accident. Uh, the quick summary of my background, I used to be an engineer. I was in the aerospace industry and I decided to start investing kind of on my own and through explore, actually secretly, I was trying to find a way out of corporate, but in the midst of that, I started investigating real estate I started doing some investing on the side and I found this turnkey model. I had never heard of it. Then everybody suddenly started wondering why I was, what I was, I wasn't swinging hammers. I wasn't doing all this complicated stuff that typically comes with real estate. And so I just kind of started telling them and they're like, well, Hey, I want that. Like my mom's friend bought one, my cousin bought one. And it kind of, I was sending so many people the turnkey route. I was finally approached at one point and said, you know, listen, if you'll get your real estate license, you can actually, you know, work the side. And I was like, well, I guess I'm kind of doing it anyways. This will be a fun side gig to my engineering job. And it picked up so much. Uh, I started a blog long time ago. I don't even know if we got more than like one blog out, but then bigger pockets found me when they were a lot smaller. I started writing for them and it, everything spiraled out of control in a good way. And here I am. So kind of my position, what I like to tell people, because real estate can be a little intimidating. I just tell you what I like who I've, I buy through. I, I'm actually the worst salesperson on the planet. So really I just share experiences and I think people find a little bit of comfort in that of, you know, it's not your typical real estate experience. So I just tell you what I know. I make no claims one way or another and go from there. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I have many Mark, many. So, uh, so turnkey, you're buying, you're buying these properties, you're rehabbing them, you're doing everything, you're putting a tenant in there, and then I'm buying it from you. Almost. I'm actually not the turnkey provider directly. I connect you with the guys who do exactly what you say. So I work with the crews who vet those guys because uh, there's turnkey providers in a lot of markets. There's a lot of turnkey providers. Some are good, some are bad. So we really dive in, try and sift through everybody and then uh, connect you with the ones that we seem to like. Is this like a Jason right. Hartman model, like platinum investment? Is that what Jason does? I think it's Jason Hartman. I think it's Yeah, similar. Jason Hartman. I don't know similar? what they do, but I think it's similar. I'm like the Vox Jason. Be like, tell me about Ali Boone and Hipster Investments. He's probably going to be like, who's that? No, no, he'll, he'll know. <laughs> so everyone knows you, Ali. So, um, Go ahead. Scott. So, so I go, I go, I buy this. You connect me with somebody that's done all that work. Yeah. 
how, what type of yield am I making? Like, what are we talking about? It kind of depends on where you're buying. So at any one given time, we're working in several different markets. And actually now we're working with turnkey providers on a secondary model, which is where you fund the distressed property and the rehab up front. And so you're kind of combining the BRRR strategy, the BRRR, however many R's are in that strategy, with turnkey. So you're getting the same financial benefits. Uh, but someone else is doing the work for you. And so on those, you're actually making significantly higher returns because you're able to force appreciation on the top. Standard turnkeys right now, you're looking between 7 and 9% on average, occasionally a 10% cap rate. Um, and that's just cap rate. So that's without financing. That's not your cash on cash. It's not like it was a few years ago. I'll admit that. But there's still returns out there. Okay. And wow. so whom is this really best for? Who, who are your people, Allie? Who are my people? Um, well, part of my job, I, I've kind of deemed myself like an emotion, emotional support animal. I've in all of this, I've tried and work with everybody, but what I've found is because I'm the smiley, gentle face compared to a lot, uh, I kind of support you on the emotional side. So I attract the newer investors. It's the people who maybe either don't have the time or the skill or the whatever to do all the hammer swinging, the maybe they wanted to get in real estate or do something smart with their money, but they didn't have time or they were too nervous. And that's kind of where I feel the gap because you don't have to do much more than your own due diligence and managing the manager, so to speak on these. And I can be there for you on the emotional side if you're a little nervous or whatever. So I, I definitely attract the newer investors for sure. Once they get good at it, they kind of, leave me behind and wave by as they build their portfolio. So you're kind of like property brothers meets Dr. Uh, Phil. Totally. And with long hair. Yeah. With long hair. Yeah. So, I'm not as pretty as the property brothers, but you know, I got the, I got the long hair part. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. What, what is some of the worst advice you see or hear given in turnkey investing? given in turn well the worst advice related to turnkey investing is not to do it uh everybody it seems like everyone who insists on buying locally or wants to swing the hammers are like oh my god turnkeys are bad and and i'll be the first person to tell somebody if i think they should not buy a turnkey because i don't think they're for everybody if you have the skill to do otherwise if you're in a market you can buy yourself i don't think you should buy turnkey at all so the worst advice i hear is not to buy turnkey because it's really situation by situation and you know whatever and then uh oh and then the other well i don't know if this is bad advice but the other misnomer misconception is that you can be a hundred percent hands off and you should not be a hundred percent hands off all the hard work is getting done for you but you should at least keep your brain involved and like i said manage the manager so to speak and make sure things are running because people are like oh well i'm hands off i don't have to deal with any problems well it's rental properties be available to handle problems or fire a manager or hire a new one or whatever. So I'd go with that one. Interesting. Scott Todd. I see the wheels. I'm still, I'm still stuck on this. I'm still stuck on this yield <laughs> on the return, right? Like okay. uh, I will admit it. I'm like a yield snob maybe, right? Okay. Like, People. Yeah, but Scott, you're, it's, it's, not, it's not for you because you and I, are, this is not for us because our yields are so high. This is for the right. person who's sitting in the right. cubicle at Procter & Gamble dreaming right. of being the person on Property Brothers, swinging the hammer, yeah. getting a house, building long-term wealth, and they ain't going to be able to do it. Or the plastic surgeon yeah. whose time is so valuable, they're not going out yeah. there to the crew. Yeah. And this is a way for them to get involved in... Yeah. In, you know, ultimately, what's what's a great real estate play? Yeah. So yeah, it would it's be not for good. us. Yeah. It's but it would be good for anymore. you though, Mark. Right? It would be good for you though. My QRP. If you money? wanted to invest in, if you wanted to invest in like a house or something, right? Like you know, like because you don't want to swing a hammer. No, but I wouldn't. I, the yield is too low for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're snobs, that's, that's, man. We're snobs. No, no, I, but that's because we're in this world. Imagine if I we weren't we in this world. See, this, well, is, I, this is where yeah. Allie's getting the value. It's just I will tell you, one, people. Of the, one of the things yeah. that, does, that, that, that I do find interesting about this piece is the fact, Mark, that the, 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 you know, the monthly income, the net, does not 
end until you sell the property, right? Like, you know, once you have that cash flow rolling, you own the house. Essentially, you're right, you're building long term wealth. And so, you know, the cash on cash today at that number might be low. But then when you look at the overall, I guess, with the depreciation and the the yeah, fact that you got tenants good. paying down the debt, then it's really more than seven to ten percent, right? And that's kind right, of where right. I was so going. You're getting those not four really quadrants. Seven to 10. Well, let's right. go through the four quadrants, right? So, Allie, what are the four quadrants that people love in in real estate? Why we invest in real estate? Cash flow. Cash flow. Uh, are we talking the cash flow quadrant? <laughs> yeah. Cash well, flow. cash flow appreciation. Appreciation. Yep. Tax. Depreciation. Depreciation. And tax. Yeah. And tax. Right. So you're getting in those four quadrants without taking the, the huge amount of risk in time and capital to do it on your own. Right. Well, and if so, I can throw something in, I would say the turnkeys are excellent ideas for three categories of people. Number one, kind of like you guys mentioned, the people who are never going to be in this industry who are not in this world and they just want to put their money somewhere other than their 0% interest bank account. So that's number one, because uh, if you are in this world, you don't need turnkeys at all. Um, number two, if you are in the world and let's say you're flipping or you're burring or BRRing or whatever you're doing, if you're whole, whatever you're doing, like if you're doing things by yourself, you can't scale as fast because it's taking your time and whatever. So like I've told people, if you're flipping or burring over here, you can fill some time gaps over here with turnkey if you want, just because then your money sitting around is not making 0% while it waits on you to finish this deal. So you can make it a temporary thing, you can do whatever, but it can fill some gaps if you don't have place for the money because of your time. Or uh, the third group is the brand new people. Maybe they're planning to get in real estate, maybe they're planning to flip, planning whatever. Turnkeys are really good at teaching you the basic fundamentals, due diligence, numbers, market analysis, all that. Because there's turnkey providers and markets I wouldn't touch at all. So it because of all the hard stuff getting done for you, it leaves you the time to learn all the basics. And I think anybody flipping, burring, more advanced stuff, you've got to learn those fundamentals because the people who go just flying off into flipping or burring, yeah, some people are going to be able to do it, but there's a good chance that you're missing the fundamental education because you're so busy with rehabbing and the advanced concepts. So new people who will never be in real estate, real estate people who need to fill the gaps while they're busy with their other stuff, or brand new people planning to get in real estate who just want to learn the fundamentals. Buy one turnkey, maybe two, learn what you need to do, and then go advance yourself off. If that's hey, Mark, just, just for those that don't know, like the, the burring that Allie's referring to, it's B-R-R-R, and it's R -R. buy, renovate, rent, Rehab. and then refinance. And then refinance. if you want to add the okay. last R, repeat. <laughs> repeat. Yeah. So if you want to add another R. So basically it's a model that they talk about on bigger pockets, by the yeah. way. I've never heard of it, but I'm sure it's a, a site out there. I wish someone would come up with a better acronym for it because Burr, people are like, what are you saying? And I'm like, R, 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 R. We need a new acronym if I had a vote. Until we get on the bigger pockets podcast, Scott, we're not going to even mention it as a site. Yeah. They won't let I'm me not, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm sore not about it at all. It, You're not you know. allowed on it either. I'm not either. Yeah, I know. But, um, <laughs> you know, I think I think it, it is interesting. So, you know, coming from your engineering background and knowing what you know today, is there anything you would have done differently when you first started out in real estate investing? The only. The major mistake that I made was one of my, I say this is my, one of my absolute best traits, but it's also one of my worst is I'm super gullible actually. And so when I've had a property manager, like I feel like property management has, it's all on the property management side. Um, there's like a life cycle to the property manager. They're great for some amount of while. And then all of a sudden they just, or a disaster. And when the disasters have started, I'll say, Hey, um, you know, haven't heard from you in a while. I'm having a hard time getting a hold of you. Like I already know something's up and I'm gullible. So when they say, Oh, you know, I've just been busy. So sorry. Things will get better. I'm like, okay. And they never do. 
And so I've in the past let property, bad property management go for too long and that can get very costly. The tenant quality can get bad, the evictions just, I went on Zillow one time, I was bored and I was looking at values of my properties that I bought in, and one said it was for rent and I was like, my property's for rent, that's weird. The tenants had been out of it for like three or four months. I had no idea. So I would say it's really, that's why I try and work with people is like, it's not hands off. Like you've got to keep an eyeball on everything. You should never trust property management for long periods of time. And so that would be, I don't even want to call it much a mistake. It's pretty gentle as far as mistakes go, but just, I, I could have afforded to do a little more due diligence probably. How, how long is the cycle for your typical property management company before they sort of lose interest? Well, I've got g- great ones now. I, they seem to, they might last a little longer. I think the really good one that fell off, I think it was maybe about three years. It kind of depends on how they're structured because if they're newer property managers and they, the biggest problem I've seen is when their company grows huge and they don't, it's like any company, if you grow too big, too fast, it, it can oftentimes be the downfall. Same with property managers as they get so many properties and then they think they can automate everything, which they can, but then the automation isn't a human either. And so it's, it's usually kind of growth problems that, or they just hate, start hating their job, which quite frankly, I, I wouldn't blame them. Ugh. I don't want to okay. be with tenants because I'm gullible. <laughs> so I would not make a good landlord at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, the, the, you know, the, I don't know if you know about our model, but we have no rehabs, no renovations, no renters, no rodents, because we buy a piece of raw land, we owner finance it. And then we have like this cash flow coming in without any of the headaches of typical real estate. That's amazing. So it's, it's great. Um, but I do think it's important for our audience to recognize there are other models Mm-hmm. And uh, as Jay Massey likes to point out from time to time, we don't get depreciation in right. raw land. That being said, <laughs> nevertheless, you can Wait, invest in a <laughs> self-directed IRA or a QRP and, you know, uh, get your appreciation tax deferred or yeah. tax free through those vehicles. Uh, Scott Todd, any other thoughts before we get to tips of the week? Are you still pondering yields? I still see the wheels. No, start. no, no. I look, I, I do. I do like, like I like I see these houses, right? Like, and, and I've never really gone down the avenue of exploring this path, but I've seen houses that they may not be the best house, but I think that they're kind of like that middle, middle income. Maybe if it was like an apartment, but it might be a C class, right? Yeah. But I see these houses like in, I don't know, Columbus, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, something like that, right? Like middle America. And, you know, it's, it's rented out, it's earning 10, 12% annual cash on cash, including the management. And, you know, you can buy one of these things for like, I don't know, 50, $60,000. Right. I mean, that, that could easily be a, a, like a retirement cash play or something. Yeah. Boom. And then you've got this income coming in for forever. Right. Yeah. You know, so I don't necessarily think it's a, it's a bad thing. I think that it's, it's, man, I hear 7% and I like cringe. I'm like, man, isn't, Bitcoin or the stock market better than 7%, but you're not getting, you're not getting that, that forever cash either. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, there's a lot of people who advertise, they'll put like the 10 year projection of 3% a year in appreciation, which I would never do one of those because in my opinion, it's just misleading in case it never happens. But to the point of it, the tax benefits are huge on residential uh, single families or even residential multis. Um, So the tax, stream with depreciation all that is huge but then you've got your equity build my all of my when i bought all my turnkeys in atlanta when it, it was about to boom they've all over doubled in value like that's not going to happen today if you buy but they're you know the appreciation is it's real um but like you said it's really it's a long-term play uh that's why the burr plus turnkey model that we've been working with has been so popular because it kind of puts a little more bang in your buck right off the top versus it just being the long-term play. So it's like a little extra bonus at the beginning, but yeah, it's, it's definitely more long-term like short-term. It's not going to do a ton for you if you're at least not if you're using a mortgage. Yeah. But it's better than bank accounts at 0.001%. Agreed. So agreed. Yeah. yeah. There's just so many avenues that you can do with, with real estate markets. It's amazing how you can, you can like, 
there's so many different models. There's so many different ways. Yeah. But you know what, Mark? You never ever get to experience that unless you take some sort of action, right? Yeah. No, it's true. I, I was wondering, Ali, do you ever think like is is crowdfunding going to replace turnkey at some point? I don't is that think a, ever is, am I thinking it. about it wrong? Uh no. It's a it's a valid I I wouldn't think so because just owning your own property, real property, it's just got benefits that you're not gonna get elsewhere. And you know, at the end of the day, owning real property beats inflation. Like inflation is actually your friend if you own real property. Um, I just I don't think it's gonna go away. I was actually asking all my crews if turnkeys were gonna go away with where prices are right now. Because in 2009, 2010, 11, 12, I mean, turnkeys were just flying off the shelves. My very first turnkey property was this really cute, amazing, freshly rehabbed two-story house in Atlanta, $55,000 that rents for a thousand a month. Like absurd. And so when people ask me now, what return do you get? I'm like, I'm not telling you because that'll just be a tease because you're not going to get it now. But so I was wondering, like, I'm in the turnkey business now. What's going to happen to my business when prices are sky high? And the reality is they're just always going to be available to some degree. It's very different today than it was in 2011, but I don't think real property options are ever going to be able to go away. It's just, it's too solid of a currency to, especially, you know, when times get a little shaky, real estate's always going to be there. It can't go anywhere. We'd all be living in like tree houses and then it would still be real estate because we'd just be investing in tree house. I mean, we have to live somewhere. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would love well, tree house. I mean, I love that show, uh, <laughs> like Treehouse Builders. You know that guy comes. Oh, up with their treehouses are bigger than my entire apartment. It's absurd. They have more amenities yeah. than I do. Yeah, you know what? I think we have a new business, Treehouse Turnkey. I'm down. I, I mean, them. you could rent that thing seven fifty a month. Oh, air. I mean, we'd have so many renting models. It'd be great. Oh yeah, Scott. That's another model we need to talk about the Airbnb rental. Yeah. We don't have time. <laughs> Scott, I can't hear you. I lost your audio. We, I said we need there to. We need to. We need to end this call right now and start uh, taking action, Mark. I know. It, it, you know, Allie, you're laughing. Scott will wire funds like by the end of the call. Oh, like, that'd be great. I'm totally in. Don't, he's not afraid. So, um, all right. Well, now we're at that point in the podcast, Allie. We want to put you on the spot. Your mentorship has been great. But we want one more piece of advice, a tip, uh, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Okay, so people have probably heard me say this, but this is my number one go-to over technical advice, over book advice, over anything. At the end of the day, my number one piece of advice is do not take advice from people you would not trade shoes with. And if you turn that around, take advice from the people who are doing what you want to be doing or who are living the lifestyle that you want to live. Kind of like we talked about, there's a million different things you can do in real estate. All of them involve different levels of work, different levels of risk, different return levels. I mean, it's the whole spectrum is covered. So to help figure out what you want to do in it or what you're good at, find people who, I mean, if you want to work on your properties and whatever, go find those people. If you want to be like me and be a total beach bum and not do anything possible, go take advice from me or somebody else. Like, cause there's so many people trying to pitch things and sell things and convince you that you shouldn't do turnkey or that you should do turnkey. You'll never hear me say you should do turnkey because I don't think everybody should. And so find the people who resonate with you the most and who are actually doing what you want to accomplish. Cause a lot of people try and sell it to you, but they're also working behind a nine to five desk. So it's like, do you really want to take advice from that person who's not doing anything related to what you're trying to accomplish? And if you combine that in the rest of your journey, research, educate, talk to people, whatever, I think that's what has absolutely taken me exactly where I want is I found the people who are doing exactly what I wanted to do and I took their advice. Great, great advice. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? That's going to be a tough one to follow. For, first of all, first of all, <laughs> I'm with you. I just want to be a bum, right? Like yep. in a good way. Like I don't want to be the, the hobo on the street. I want to be like, you know, enjoying life. Yep. Working when I want to, like, 
you know, just squeaking out the day. Um, but Mark, here's, here's my tip. Um, check out this website. It's hushed.com. S U uh, I'm sorry. H U S H E D.com hushed.com. And basically it's a, it's an app and it's also a service that you can get for your phone. Believe it or not, they have it for, for Apple and Google, or Android. I'm surprised people even, you know, buy Androids, but people, people hey, still buy well, Androids. Well, Look at that. I have an Android. <laughs> you're and you're breaking up. Can't hear you. Well, I keep Wait. The same one. <laughs> you're breaking up. We can't hear you. <laughs> how, how, did, how did Allie get on this podcast again? <laughs> yeah, she wasn't vetted clearly. <laughs> That's a new question. What kind of phone do you use, Mark? And, you right, know. right. Yeah, right, that's, right, that's a very anyway, question. So check this out. You can, um, you can, you know, use this app. It gives your phone a secondary phone number. So look, I know a lot of people like when they're starting out their business or whatever, they'll maybe use Google Voice and oh, Google Voice is a free service. Yeah, Google Voice is a free service, but you know what? It, it, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird the way it works. You know, you have to have this other app. And, um, you know, this is another app I know, but essentially this gives you, you know, custom voicemail for every phone number. You can have multiple phone numbers, not just one Google voice. And, uh, it's not bad if you just sign up, it's like, and you need it. It's like five bucks a month. Not bad. That's not bad. That's a great tip. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Second phone number. Then you can filter out the cool. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Which Allie, you, you, this might be perfect for you. Oh, I couldn't find my phone number anywhere. I have people all the time are like, how do you run a business and you don't have a phone number? I'm like, very easily. (laughs) That's what he knows. What's that? That's kind of a hipster thing to do, don't you think, Mark? Right? Yeah. Well, actually, we do. Hipster does have a phone number now, but secretly, I'll tell you, if you call it, it's going to go to a voicemail and say, leave us your uh, email and we'll shoot you an email because we're too busy having fun. There you go. It's perfect. So um, that was our hipster secret, but yeah, yeah. I mean, my tip of the week is going to be learn more about Allie Boone at hipsterinvestments.com. We'll have a link to it, hipsterinvestments.com. And, um, you know, I think it's a, it's a tremendously valuable service that, um, you know, everyone should look into unless you're like Scott and I, you're a total yield snob, but if you're not, (laughs) this is phenomenal. And the day will come again when the yields will go up. I mean, we always know the economy is going to cycle. And um, so absolutely. I mean, it's, it's great to, to learn that. And uh, you know, hipster investments, what, you know, it's so funny. Like I, I was watching like a comedy show and the woman was like hipster or homeless. Like she'd play like this fun game in San Francisco. <laughs> so you, know, like that. you like that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. But um, I do want to remind all the listeners today's, uh, podcast is sponsored by the most incredible software solution I know of called geekpay.io. It is the only set it and forget it solution. If you're a landlord and you got to collect money on an automated basis from your renters, use geekpay.io, right? One time set and forget it. Your borrowers can call you up and say, Hey, what's my current balance? No, they can go online and see what their current <laughs> balance is, right? They can make a prepayment. ACH, if the ACH fails, it charges the credit card on file. It's really, really hard not to get your money using geekpay.io. I also want to thank the listeners and the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like an Allie Boone huh. from hitsterinvestments.com. You got to do three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free our $97 passive income launch kit Ooh, for free. See, fancy. there you go. So uh, please do that. And uh, are we good? Allie Ben, are we good? We're good. Oh, and reach out to us because we're super friendly and we love talking to people and we don't charge you anything. So why not? No, I mean, for me, this might be a free therapy session, actually. I'm just going to call it. Oh, well, like I said, I'm basically an emotional support animal. So therapy, whatever you need. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. I mean, like, hey, uh, I'm working with this guy, Scott Todd. And I, I just feel like, uh, you know, he wants to just be on the boat all the time. Couples therapy. We do that too. Wait, Scott, I can't hear I don't have your audio. <laughs> I don't know why this thing keeps up. Mark, one thing. 
She's a great support person, but you can't find her phone number. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Those Android people are slick. Yeah. <laughs> they are I, slick, aren't they? Phone numbers? I don't, it's so antiquated. I don't know. Let's see. How does someone get me on my Android? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. They they got you got to send up a smoke signal first. I think right, it's, like, it's, like, like, it's like the it's like those old like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, remember, Mark? Did you? Okay, wait, wait, Mark. You you know that thing like that dialing thing, right? Yeah, my dialing, grandparents you know had about, one of right? those. The phone. You know what we're talking about? The phone. Yeah. It, like it was like a rotary dial. Yep. Mark, I hated getting to the last number and then messing up. Oh, that was the worst. You would I mean, have to like, like hang like, up and do it all over again. <laughs> and then the best line was this. I have a long distance call. This is a long distance call. Shut up. It's a long distance call. Remember those? Like the long distance oh calls were big deals. The long distance calls were crazy. It yeah, was like, yeah. it was unbelievable. Like it, it was almost like a, uh, like I remember my grandparents would call and like, you could like set a timer for like two minutes. Like they were getting through that thing so fast. Okay. Hope you're all well. Love you. Bye. <laughs> like, wait, what just happened to Grandma and Grandpa? My mom's like, it's a long distance call. In Florida, it's a long distance call. Like, we take all this stuff for granted. All right, anyways, um, Scott, we're good. Allie, we're good. We're good. We're good, Mark. All right, are we going to do this in front of Allie, Scott, or are we just going to? Oh, we're just going to, we're just going to, like, like, like e e yes, Mark. You know what? She's like, she's like this podcast to all the listeners like, turn one, really fast. One, two, three. <laughs> Let right. freedom ring. I did it. Let freedom ring. Let okay. freedom we did it. ring. See, you did it. Am I, am I in the group? Am I approved? You're in. Now you're in. You are approved. Nice. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>